Welcome back to another episode of the Twisted Tubs podcast. I am your host, Stephen Tubbity, a.k.a. Twisted Tubs. And look who's come back to us, Luna Wolf, a.k.a. Wolfie. Welcome back Hi, to the yeah. show, my dear. I'm, ooh, <laughs> I'm tangled in my cable. Hi! Hi Hello! <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> delighted to see you back. Um, we did oh, promise thanks. you would be back. So, yeah, here she is. Ooh. And we're going to talk yeah. more. We're going to ramble more. Um, we're, gonna, we, we're definitely going to do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think we pretty much did on the first one. Um, mm-hmm. I think it was all good, though. I mean, there was... Oh, so much fun. <laughs> there was one moment, though, if you remember, I did actually melt my own brain. But, yeah. Um, I, Sorry, I, it's my turn next. <laughs> do you know what? If it happens, just go over it, because I think that's what happened. I tried to, like, I tried to... I tried to stop it from happening, and then it just made it worse. So I was going, no, no, just in future, just let the, the brain melt happen, you know? Yep. Um. But yeah, I mean, like, as I said, I mean, we, the last time you were on, we, we talked about, um, like, all manner of things, you know, so we went through everything. film and, and everything else. But um, so I think today we're going to start on your YouTube. Just start, just get stuck in and about the YouTube channel and, and the plans you have going forward for it and things like that. Um, yeah, sounds great. Yeah, because I, I mean, I'm genuinely interested to, because I, I, I know you have the Twitch. We'll talk about yeah. both. We'll start on YouTube. Um, but mm-hmm. I, I, I'd love to personally kind of know, like, like, what's it all about? And where are you going with it and stuff? Because, you know, I just love all that stuff, content in general. Okay, so I've always, I've always wanted to... Um, I've never really known what I need to make it about. You know, like, everybody has their own brand. Every, everybody has their own type of content. And there's just me going, I really want to do a YouTube channel, but I'm really not sure as to what the content is going to be about. So once, uh, ever since I started with um, uh, the Metal Gear Solid stuff, I kind of like went, all right, well, I really, really enjoy this game. So I'm going to do a uh, weekly or, well, <laughs> I'm going to try and do it weekly. I'm going to do <laughs> episodes of uh, Metal Gear Solid uh, to, you know, once every mission or once every two missions of a sudden like people started to (laughs) really lovely people started to buy like these games from my wish list and um like i don't i don't have time to play them all at the same time so i was like oh what can i do to i know i can do unboxing so then i started um i started doing them uh the youtube channel on games because that was literally what's to hand but I do have a massive list of other content that is game related. It's game related. I'm not going to like it. It's going to be um, me going off to say do axe throwing or maybe do some shooting or some clay pigeon shooting or archery or, you know, all these things that are kind of game related, if that makes sense, like weapon sports. Yeah. And I'm hoping I'm hoping that maybe in the future I could try out mocap. Wow. And then I'll I'll die I'll diary that like I mean I haven't got any connections yet but <laughs> so just you know if you're watching um... <laughs> <laughs> come here there's um I I know as I said I don't know anyone that does more hair personally but I do know one or two people that know yeah. one or two people that do you know what I mean you just it's just about going down the channels and finding like someone that can kind of put you in that direction yeah that's really cool um but you know just on the off chance uh you know mocap and then maybe do um because I remember last time we were talking about my LARP gaming yes. um that's very much like almost like the live action role play of what you'd imagine a video game to be. So there's there's that as well. And, um, you know, all these different avenues of all these things that I really enjoy, um, they're all kind of linked to the movie industry and like me being like a filmmaker and in, in making movies and things. Um, and I, I was hoping that my my YouTube channel would kind of be a diary or a journal of, of my adventures, if that makes sense. Yeah, of so, course. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was looking into potentially maybe buying a truck (laughs) so I would go and test drive a truck and see you know like have me like do all that kind of stuff as well and maybe do like what it's like to own a Mustang or ride a Harley or you know um, (laughs) camera tricks even camera tricks like those are those are very relevant things (laughs) Um, to go back to what you were saying there actually I think it's this will tell you about differences of, of, of people and their, their things where you were saying is I, I might um, buy, buy a truck or 
you'll go yeah. and play a Mustang. And I'm at the other side of that car. I'm like, I'm going to get my license now. Yeah. I, I've oh. never drove. I've never had a car. It's but insane. have you ever needed to, though? See, what happened was a few years. You know, I mean, look, everyone I knew always had like a car. So I was always around a vehicle and transport. Mm-hmm. It was one of those things where a few years ago, I'd say even going back, maybe maybe a decade ago at this point. Um, yeah. I was having I was having a few drinks and my friend was outside and I went to park his car into my driveway. Oh dear. But, so I ended up driving his car into the neighbor's BMW and wrecking the whole thing. I had no license um, and that was and I was starting to learn how to drive. So I think that derailed me and my confidence and everything of getting mm-hmm. actually into a car and going. Um, yeah. So 10 years later, I'm kind of going, no, now is time to do it because I'm getting older now. So I need to you know, jump in well, and train. I'm, yeah, I mean, I've got every th- faith that you'll be able to do it just fine. Oh, yeah. I mean, I will eventually. <laughs> I mean, I said it to my brother. I jumped out of a plane. I can drive a car. You jumped out of a plane too? Oh, my God. Hey, I did that. Have you ever done that? <laughs> so much fun. It was so much fun. Oh, Those my... three seconds from 0 to 120 miles an hour was the best three seconds of my entire I mean, life. <laughs> and like, obviously you've done it. So it, it's like I was trying to explain it to someone. It's it's like it's the free fall from the plane is. to when the clouds break open. Yep. It, like you don't even realize how but fast you We did it on a clear falling. day. We did it like, on a clear day. How high did you jump from? Uh, 13,500. Oh, so you, you were 3,000 we, higher than me because in Ireland... Yeah. We went at the up time, you, it, I think you were only allowed to go 10. Yeah, so they they were, they originally said that we were going to do 10,500 feet, but then they went up a bit higher anyway, and it was wow. fucking cold up there. And did but, you did you do the free fall or the cannonball? Off the uh, we did the free fall. We did well, the, free he, fall. the guy that had me in the tandem, he said to me, he was like, um, he was like so what, what do you want to do? Do you want a free fall or do you want a cannonball? I was like... <gasps> And because in, in my brain, I was going, oh I'm probably never going to do this again. So oh I was like, gosh. just cannonball me. And he just says to me into my ear, he was like, keep your eyes open the entire way down. And I swear to God, it was just warm. And then he kind of, he, you know. You've given me goosebumps. Like, now I want to go and do that. What the I didn't get a was, choice. I had one moment <laughs> and it's one of these crazy things because, you know, obviously, with the, you know, you know yourself, you've done it. So the wind hit your face and everything. And I had, sl- I had slight head <gasps> cold. I'm going up there, so I was kind of like going, oh, my God. So by the time I got down to the ground, um, obviously, yeah. you know, when you do it, they record it and things, and, and it comes, and the camera comes right into me as I'm on the ground, and the first thing yep. you hear out of my mouth is, oh, it's not all over myself. <laughs> and I'm going, oh, that's like, why in your brain? Why, why would they the first words you chose to say when you <laughs> landed on the ground? <laughs> oh. so I was did you, you know what I mean? But I, I was you, like um, you. Go did you do a force? Part. Did you did your body force a scream out of you in the first three seconds? Because I couldn't oh, stop. Man. I was like, ah! oh, did you find it wasn't out of fear? No. It was it was, like- it was out of sheer excitement. It was like all of the excitement in my life, like bottled into three seconds, and it just came out of me. Yeah. And I was like, Wah! and it was just like it, it, I mean, I'm like, such I, I, a twat. You can, I don't think you could, I, no, no, you're not at all, because I did the very same thing. I will, I will even send you my video at some point to show you that you're not alone. I did that thing. I wore a Superman t-shirt my jump, oh, because me. I was like, because I'm to, such a We nerd. had to wear a jumpsuit. We had to wear this really disgusting, like, blue jumpsuit with this stupid little cap head, uh, like, thing on it. cap oh. and the glasses, yeah. Um, and did I wear, no, I know Joe, what it was. I wore the jumpsuit, but I wore a t-shirt over it. Yeah, that's what I did. So I had this big, massive Superman logo on mm-hmm. me, and I was like flying in the sky. So I was Superman for three minutes, and I was loving it because yeah. I'm such a. It nerd. was it was when he gave me control of the the parachute because when he pulled the parachute, he was like, "Do you want to like steer?" And yeah. I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I do." Yeah, so, so mad. Spent, just, spent, <laughs> and we were going around like horizontally I because i mean i think i mean obviously they, they do 50 plus jumps a day so they're they're they don't give a shit you know they're so used yeah, to they doing don't give it a shit. so but it's i'm not i was like you so when i was controlling it i like pulled it and we literally just started going like, <laughs> yeah, it's like this it's like this <laughs> but the, the part i loved about it the most was always when you're coming through that clouds all you can see is clouds 
out, so yeah. then it just it just breaks open. And then, so we had a very clear day, so I could see the curvature of the earth. Same, like everything same, was really like up the top. When you mm-hmm. were sitting, and this is the thing, like I was sitting in the plane like that, and he's just your man said to me, "Look up, see it." It's like the curve. And I'm like, and then he, I mean, what I didn't realize was, is, you know, when you look up to the sky and you see clouds, that's yeah. not even the clouds. That's kind of more like a veil. <laughs> yeah, that's like more the like the stratosphere. <laughs> yeah, and then you go up and you get. I mean, like when you go up, um, like from ten thousand feet up, you realize how mm-hmm. high you actually are. And so, look, yeah. I think me and Luna are literally just saying to anyone, like, jump out of a plane. It's epic. Like, yeah so. anybody who hasn't jumped out of a plane yet they really need to <laughs> i think you've got more chance of being eaten by a shark on land to to have any problems with the uh, safety issues because they literally do like you said 50 jumps a day so i mean and, yeah. and it's and if it's tandem as you said as these guys you know yeah there's are... ha- i think the hardest bit was when he said to lift my knees <laughs> and so <laughs> oh hi um one side to Luna first before you go <laughs> yeah Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, thanks. It's like <laughs> that's Chris. <laughs> oh, she's cool. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, was the hardest thing I think, and the the thing I didn't enjoy the most was like when he says raise your knees for landing, because where the where the harness had got me in the wrong place, it had curved my back, and I couldn't raise my knees, and so my legs went under us, and I was just like, oh, oh mate, it's really good job I'm bendy. Oh. I, I genuinely did get like my yeah. I mean that was out of all of the things that I was told not to do like you know when you like never grab the Don't harness stick your keep your hands down. out and yeah. it was the, the one thing that stuck in my head was push those legs out before I hit the ground I was like I don't want to break my legs <laughs> so I'm yeah. just going to kick them forward um, yeah yeah and yeah I mean like so like in the first 10 minutes of this interview we have went from <laughs> YouTube to gaming and <laughs> Uh, to skydiving out of nowhere and this is what yeah. I love it completely went um, that way yeah but, but I, I, I you, absolutely would do that again absolutely oh, hands down. you know something um, did you do yours for charity yeah I did mine for the mine charity yeah see um, I did it was suicide prevention and we did yeah. I was two, myself and two friends so we did yeah. it for that and um, it's just such a great cause because even though you're you're doing it for a, a, a charity you feel yeah. accomplished in that sense. You feel like you've done something good and yeah. you have done something good. You've raised money for a great cause. Um, I think I absolutely would have done it anyway. Um, oh, because hands I'm down. mad like that. I'm mad like that. But the opportunity came up and I just jumped on it. Like, because my brother and I were working at the same company yeah. at the time. And there was like 20 people signed up to it and only two of us did it, actually did it. And my brother chickened out and I was just like, no! Yeah. <laughs> uh, one so of the girls cool. one of the girls that yeah. was with, with that did it with us um Haley uh, she'll kill me for saying this um but she was terrified of heights I mean mm. so bad um so when we went up she was the first one to go and I remember the instructor said he goes look I know you're scared but he said count to three and she went one and he whipped her up. and he and then, yeah that's the, just the only way you thing- can do it the thing is, though, like I know everybody's like, "Oh no, I'm scared of heights. I'm scared of heights." But when you're up there, it doesn't look like a height. I'm such Does a it? weirdo for that. I know, no, the it's plane is different so because weird. It's, it's such like as I, yeah. I was trying to explain. You know, because you've done it. It's yeah. It looks like a little model town. It doesn't it look does. real. When, when, when those clouds yeah. break open and you see, it, it, but it, it's so weird because as you said it looks like a model town. It doesn't look real, yeah. but in the back of your head, you you do realize. So, oh, shit. I'm the ground's so coming. High. Oh my god, the ground is getting big and it's getting big really quick. Oh, uh, what are we supposed to be doing here? <laughs> Do you know what I love about it as well? Is because you know, when you're free falling and yeah. you can't hear a single thing, it's just boom, 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 boom. But the yeah. minute that parachute is pulled and you stop, like you get jumped and you, you level, and you, you think and you think that it's going to be like like float a floating feeling, but it's absolutely not. If if feels like you're hanging from the ceiling by something i don't know if anybody's like done like uh aerial hoop or anything like that but it feels like that it's not like a floating sensation when you pull that shoot it's like a pulling and oh my god i feel really heavy kind of feeling yes i i I, and it hands down i will go and do that again yeah that's something that happens in 2022 i will go over to england come over to ireland and we will do this hell yeah let's do do it Let's yes. do that. I'll come to I'll come to Ireland. Uh, I found a <laughs> I've never to do it. 
I've never been to Ireland, so I'll come. No way. I'll come over. Yeah, no, I've never been. Yeah, we're going to have to get you over in a set and then go skydiving. Hell yeah. yeah. I've been almost everywhere that there needs to be gone, like in North America, like yeah. Florida, like LA, Vegas, all of those places, um, Arizona. and But I've never been to Ireland. And wow. The crazy thing about it is, bad, I don't it? think anyone really knows this. I think it's the first time I've ever like said this, but I think when I went to Frightfest was the first time I ever... I ever went to England on my own. Wow. Yeah. That was only two years ago. But the first time I ever left Ireland was when I was 17. And I went to Pittsburgh and Philadelphia wow. for two months. That was the first time wow. I left the country. I was like, I'm going to go to Pittsburgh. Not even in America, like in, you know, normally there. you hear. I mean, we had, I had family and friends there. So um, the only time that I've ever was, caught a flight on my own was when I was um, coming back from Val d'Azur from France. I, I literally got my diary completely screwed up, ADHD. Um, and I had booked a party venue for <laughs> the day before I was meant to fly back with the with like everybody. So we were doing like snowboarding and things. Well, they were skiing, I was snowboarding. Um, and I had to book myself a flight back from Geneva to London because there was no other flights available so I had to get on a I had to get on a bus full of strangers for like four hours from Belle d'Azur to Geneva and then I had to find my way in this airport that I'd never been to in my life um get all checked in and, and end up like flying from Geneva to Gatwick and then like getting in my car and then driving so it was like there was no sleep to be had for like 24 hours <laughs> because literally as I got off the flight and got home I had like an hour before I needed to be at the venue so I was just like wow I need to plan my life a hell of a lot better next time <laughs> you know what we probably do but every time we go Never to happens. plan it it, 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 it ends up you know mm-hmm. being a being a mashup but no going back to what you were saying about snowboarding I, I, have, I have a funny story about snowboarding too it was when I actually went to Pittsburgh it was do you know the Y2K New Year's it's like yeah. the 2000 New Year's I oh was, my god yeah <laughs> that's when i went to america <laughs> oh, like, wow that's when it was my like, i was 70 i turned 18 in america and um, oh we, okay so i'm a couple of years younger than you. we went um uh I'm, I'm not going to be i want I'm, uh, you know instantly i went to go what age i, I wouldn't you know do that so we we'll keep that i'm going to move on <laughs> <laughs> but um i was over and um, we went to philadelphia to a mm-hmm. ski resort over and I'm Irish. I'm pale as crap. You know, I'm, 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 I've never been out of the country and I've never seen real snow. So we go to Pittsburgh um, or we were in Pittsburgh. We went to Philadelphia and then yeah. we went to the, the ski resort. Now, I had been at two hours training on a, on a snowboard. Oh, my you know? God. You're just like me. And I went up to the top of the mountain. and You know, obviously, it was there with the lads or whatever. And there was these two American girls. And instantly, sure. I go into show off mode and I'm like, oh, I am going to go down this mountain, hit that slope and pull a 360 flip. Oh dear. Yeah, so okay, I went well, down that mountain. You're not quite like me. <laughs> <laughs> so I went down that mountain, went up the slope and did a 360 flip and I landed on my knee and dislocated it and then looked up and those girls were nowhere to be seen. So I'm sitting there. Oh going, my goodness. I'm in America and at least I didn't my witness knee. it. <laughs> And at I'm least like, you didn't witness that, and at least you didn't land on your head. But I've got an exact, yes. almost, almost an exact similar story. I had four hours on the baby slopes uh, in Milton Keynes here on a snowboard, and then I went straight out to Austria. And all my friends were skiers, and they were like, "All right, let's we're, we're doing this black run." And so I was like, "Okay." And then they all like they're flying down this fucking mountain, and I'm on I'm on a an Austrian mountain like where I know nothing about the landscape or where I'm supposed to be going or where even our hotel room is. So I'm trying to keep up with them. And um, for most of the trip back down, I was on my ass, upside down, screaming. (laughs) And all these skiers are coming after me going, are you okay? Do you need a lift down? I'm like, no, just leave me. I'm fine. I think I'll get down this way. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. (laughs) And was that... I mean, outside of like the, the slopes at home, was that your first time ever being up on yeah. a mountain? The first yes. time I've ever been on a mountain. Like, and I, I was wearing a bikini of all things. 
But I think because in Austria it's warm, isn't it? Oh, snow. okay, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, when you think about Austria, snow. Yeah. Was it was it snow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was loads of snow. There, it was it's just snow everywhere. It's fresh snow, but during the day you can you can have like just a t-shirt on or whatever. So we we're all like, oh yeah, bikinis, hot girls, and snowboards. And I was like, like in- I, I've got snow in all the wrong places. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I've well, got I think, snow in places I didn't know existed. Do you think that like falls into the impulsiveness of it then as well? Because yeah. I do remember having like like you know the thing, thing I was talking about with the car and just you know mm-hmm. things like that. Just in a very impulsive nature. Yeah. So like you do these things and then it's afterwards you're going, Oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Like I drove said. from I drove back home okay. from Austria to London in one go we didn't stop I don't know why I didn't stop but uh, I had one arse cheek bigger than the other no word of a lie it was like double the size of the other one so it was like lopsided and I was trying to drive home in this fucking <laughs> little Ford and I was just like oh no <laughs> didn't stop me from going back though I- I'm oh. still a snowboarder today <laughs> oh do you still do it now yeah. it's one thing that I out of all the things it's probably because obviously I, I'm in Ireland and you know even when we get snow the town I live in it's like it yeah. falls around the town yeah. like the pollution in the in the town kills it before it lands on the ground it's the same here we just, in we London. just never get it um, yeah. so I, I'm like I'm mad to go and like oh, go to it, land or Austria just, and France are so good Val like you yeah. have to you have to get a coach from the airport because Val is like one of those places that is a little bit off the beaten track um, but I think Val is is one of the one of my favorite places to go, and then Austria I think is the second because I went to snow bombing of all places uh, for the first time in Austria. So it wasn't just the fact that I had four hours of lessons and I went straight onto a black run. We'd been drinking the night before and I was very hungover. So <laughs> and it, and it was just like a whole weekend of festivals and like live music, and we saw. Um, I can't remember the band, but we were on an igloo three and a half thousand feet in the air on a mountain, you know, and there's me in my little bikini and my snow boots going, shit, I should have dressed a little bit better than this, (laughs) you know, (laughs) Uh, because when it gets dark, it gets fucking cold, you know, so I stole all of their little, their little like sheep rugs and wrapped them around me and I was just like, nope, (laughs) I'm just going to wait for the next thing down so that I can go and have a nice hot shower but it was an experience and I would do it all over again I'll just wear more clothes do you know something that's and I I've said it before as me because obviously do you know what I mean like it, me and you seem to be kind of floating on the same coin and, 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 yeah. and with a lot of our stories so it's, it's <laughs> it is very much the thing of like but I, I wouldn't give them back even the impulsive things and the things you do mm. because it's it's it, it, it makes you who you are and it becomes that Absolutely. part of your journey and your story. And, and, and it means we've lived. And it's, uh, as I said to you about like, you know, my, my daughter, Grace, it's, it's um, I yeah. keep telling her that it's like, you know, don't look at it as, as a hindrance. It's a superpower, yeah. man. You it know? is a superpower. Like so many people, like uh, they're always, oh yeah, I suffer from ADHD. Yes, it is. You can like really suffer from it. But if, if you, uh, the one thing that really helped me out, out at, actually was if I was making friends with an, an ADHD group for adults on Facebook and nice. I, I followed the ADHD um, hashtags on Twitch and you know what it's actually taught me an awful lot but making friends with other people with ADHD makes you realize that it is a superpower and okay. it is like <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it is it's a superpower and if you can if you can hack into your power yeah. and you can do things like lightning in a bottle like we spoke about last yes. time yeah. um and you can have coping mechanisms and you can have things in place where you can then recover because like fright fest for me i needed like two weeks recovery time i will do it time and time again because it is yeah. so much fun and i i will you know I will always go back. Um, even if even if I don't interview, I will always go back. But it is so very overwhelming that you know you need that. You need to be able to give yourself recovery time with everything. You need to be able to give yourself recovery time. And um, as long as you have all of that in place, then it is. It's definitely a superpower. It is, um, I, I, I agree with you one hundred percent. I mean, when I mean, not to like ask too many personal questions but when, like were you like when did you find out you had it oh. um 
Well, I've Lord suffered from it my entire life. Looking back, yeah. looking back on it now, Same. but I've yeah. only really discovered uh, 2020 because, um, like I say, I, I had a bit of a an awful breakup, but I'm not going to go into that. But that oh, God, in, no. it, in itself, in itself, made me realise. Oh yeah. Um, although I was like, I've had people say that I had ADHD in the past. Mm-hmm. Like I never really paid too much attention to it. And now that I've gone, do you know what? I can't ignore this anymore. Um, I'm going to look into it. And the more I looked into it, the more I realized actually I'm very, very high on that spectrum. Mm-hmm. Um, but the more I looked into it, cause I, I hyper-focused on it. I was like, I don't want to be this asshole that everybody was like made me out to be in that situation. Um, so like I, I I want to in myself make sure that I'm not that person that they've made me out to be um, simply for the fact I don't want to be. And then I went, oh, OK, <laughs> ADHD, that's a thing for me. And then I went, all right, how can I make how can I make it better for me and those around me? Right. So I hyper focused on it and the amount of information I actually found was it was incredible. Coping mechanisms, things you can do, things like sugar oh do you suffer from sugar i i actually believe it or not it's, it's, it's weird i stopped drinking soft drinks completely um, and i know i still drink coffee and um, but i changed sugar to honey yep yeah it's only these little yep. things were because i found hands down yep and before i found out because, <laughs> and the reason i asked I, I i asked you that question was because i didn't actually find out i was on the spectrum I always, like yourself, I always knew I was too impulsive and people would yeah. always say, oh, you probably have hit ADHD. I'm like, no, so I'm just, I'm just mad tubs. You know, you'd always rule yeah. it off like that. But it was when my daughter was diagnosed with it is when I realized it. I was like, oh my God. Yeah, it we runs are the family, doesn't it? Exact same. The exact know, same like, things. And now, now we, <laughs> I say that my mother missed an, um, an awful lot of checks with me when she was growing up. <laughs> it's like her, but, but, um, but you know what I well, mean. They do, though. Kind of... Like when we were kids, there wasn't very much, like no. there wasn't very much support or knowledge about it. To be honest, and like to be fair, it was one of those things when we were kids, Luna. It was like you were either, oh, he's just a ball child, or he's just a very hyper kid. Yeah, yeah. You know, mine came on. I, I can, I can, I can trace back everything where mine came to be a problem for me, and that was in nine in high school. Like my grades just fucking plummeted. Every, all beforehand, I was like hyper focusing on my grades and everything, and hyper focusing on everything else. But then, boom! All of a sudden, everything plummeted, and I was like, "I don't see the point in what when when in the fuck are we ever going to use trigonometry? Like, what is this shit? You know? Question. <laughs> why, why should I bother? Like, you know? And I haven't used it to this day. Uh, to to, ever. to be fair, you know, and my grades weren't that great, but you know. Um, I think, and uh, I had 58 employed jobs in my entire life before I stopped trying to fit into that box. Nice. Like, I, you know, I, I would start a job and then I would get bored and then I would be like, why? Why am I, why am I, like, who, who gives a fuck if I'm five minutes late? Like, why are you having a go at me, man? Like, go and check yourself oh my God. <laughs> it's just like fuck me it's not that terrible you know I just work faster or something you know so I, I like my authority I've got really bad authority problems as well so um, I, I completely agree with you because I think every manager <laughs> I've ever had would actually agree mm-hmm. with what you said about me in those jobs yeah. not that mm-hmm. I was a bad worker it's just Mm-mm. I spent 50% of my time um, with my head in the clouds, thinking yeah. of movie ideas and things I would rather yeah. be doing than sitting at this desk or in. My head was in movies too. Yeah. So. My head was in movies. I was always making up these movie scenarios in my head and I wasn't concentrating on this fucking nine to five job that was like draining the, the life out of me because I was just not fucking interested in it. I was only doing it because I was trying to make ends meet, you know? And um, then it just sort of clicked. I was like, well, fuck it. I'm just going to go like freelance so I'll pick up the contracts I want because I'm really like I, I I went into graphic design because I love imagery and cameras and things like that and um I went into graphic design and then I started working for Sky and then I was like I'm bored shitless of golf and cricket and so then I worked for the sun because I was like oh maybe I'll get a murder or something <laughs> and then 
they put me on then they put me on the sun holidays and I was just like <sighs> you know instead of working there I'd rather be on these holidays yeah well yeah. maybe not the sun holidays the, the yeah. 999 ones um <laughs> <laughs> an so adventure just, in itself though exactly and so now I just I, I pick up contracts here and there I do I do editing so I edit for the guys at the earth locker I haven't done one in a little while because I decided to have a little break because my brain wasn't working properly yeah. but um in the very early times I was helping them with their YouTube uh, channel uh, and you know like editing and, and photography and you know all these little tiny projects that I can pick up I can have them as bite size so it's not stressful and yeah. I don't feel like I don't feel like that's the rest of my life if that makes sense because it's just like if I have oh, one totally. consistent thing even if I enjoyed it and I was hyper focusing on it in the very first time like six months of it would just be like yeah I want to I mean, go and, and uh, snowboard one, <laughs> one thing that I could never and it's it's not a, to anyone else's detriment because you know everyone yeah. else's goals and things and stuff it's just but when I was I remember I was working in it's Virgin Media now but it was like it was UPC or whatever but it, it, mm -hmm. it, it was the office and stuff in there and um and it it was just you'd see people trying to like get promotions and you know, go up the ladder and and in my brain I was saying it was like why I just don't get it but that was I'm saying that's yeah. their direction mine was obviously like you're saying mine was it, trying to get out of the door at fucking yeah, six o'clock trying to find creativity <laughs> man and trying to find a way to get out that door to to land in that creative uh, crea yeah. creative bubble and then I was made yeah. redundant. And yeah, I've been made in, redundant a few times. Yeah, in 2015. So I was like, I mean, and and then I had no job, but my mind was kind of more, I'm out now. Like, I'm out. Mm -hmm. Oh, I celebrated every time I either got fired or made redundant. I was just like, woohoo, freedom, man. And then, as I like to call them, the norms that think like, you know, like regular people are like, why are you celebrating? Yeah. You don't have a job. I'm like, you don't this understand. I can free. make the videos I've got now. All the time in the world. Yeah. I can play games and I can just yeah. enjoy my time. You know? <laughs> and then reality sets in. You're like, oh fuck, am I going to pay rent? <laughs> yeah. But and I think it, that's what that, it is. You know, I think it's that fear that has kept me driving forwards. It's like I need to pay my rent. I need to have a roof over my head in order to be able to then create things. So, you know, it's 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 that mixed with being able to do what I wish to do and try and make money out of the things and it. You know, I think it's like that massive level up when you decide not to be employed ever again, because yes. I think our kind are kind of unemployable to a certain extent. Um, it's either that or we just hit into the grind and then we start getting really depressed, if that makes sense. Yes, no, 100%, because I just find as well, um, and, and it can be one of those things where like, I mean, I, I just get it sometimes where I wake up and... If my if my brain isn't if it's not switched on to the level mm -hmm. I need it to be, yeah. I mean, I have, for no rhyme or reason I could be sitting there all day just going, like, yeah, what's going on? Yeah. And in my humor shit, and and I'm trying to balance, and then you know because I've actually started the day behind where I mm -hmm. need to be, yeah, yeah, yeah. chasing my tail, and then I'm just I'm agitated and you know, things like that. So, um, oh like gosh. in the morning time, I, when I try to get up in the morning, I like I have to have a coffee. To just sit there and just like you know take that like routine, five minutes because just... hmm? if yeah you do if, if your routine the... is broken yeah um, absolutely that's when I start to kind of get like um <laughs> lose focus you know? yeah um, yeah yeah if if um if I so I have a routine in the morning I usually get up or I, and I have a shower or I have a bath or I, I reach my lemon and then I have a bath or a shower um. And then I do certain things in the day. If my routine is broken, then that's it. My whole day is fucked. <laughs> it's yeah. just like, well, it didn't go to plan. Never mind. We'll try again tomorrow. But did you know <laughs> what it's like for me as well? It's um, as well, Luna. It's like, do you know when you have a job and you wake up late and you go into that, like, oh, I got to get to work on time and I'm rushing. And then you get to work and you are in a, a complete trail all day of trying to catch your own tail trying to catch up and yeah and you and you never catch it you don't yep. it's, it's, it, it is that thing of you are just chasing that tail all day long yeah it's, um, it's like your brain is so stressed out about all those th extra little things that it's had to go through in order to get you to work on that you know as soon as possible then it just never catches up because there are so many other things that are going on inside your brain you're just like well you know 
fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just fucked now. Oh, it's, it's crazy as well because you know when it comes to like as you were like, obviously, yeah. Luna is very big video gamer and she has a channel and a Twitch uh, channel that are that you spoke about last time. But just to get into it, I find with do you know what you've you probably heard it growing up is like oh those video games are rot your brain. Yeah, either that or mm. oh you're in a dream world. You never you never you never put your feet on the ground. I or... am so. Uh, like if a game catches my attention, then I am laser focused in. Like all my, oh, all yeah. my, my, my entire brain is shooting at all, at all, mm-hmm. at, at everything on it. Um, mm-hmm. I'm playing a game currently at the moment. I just cleared it. I literally, as I'm saying, remember I said in the last episode that Paddy Murphy is very much mm-hmm. the completionist. If he starts a game, oh. he has to, he has to get it there. He has, and that's the mission. He he, mm-hmm. he will play it till. I was never like that. I was always like, I play games and I beat the game and I go back and play it and I just kept going to the next one and the next one because my attention's yeah. shit at the best of times. But then I came across Day is Gone. Day is Gone? Yes. Mm-hmm. This is basically, have you, you've not played it, no? No, I need to write this down. <laughs> yes. Get a pen and paper and write this down because this is my recommendation for you. Um, day, for your is, it, is it Day is Gone? Days, as in D A. Oh, Days? Yeah, Days. Um, days gone, but it is basically if gone. best way to, to describe this game is if Sons of Anarchy, The Walking Dead, and 28 Days Later had a baby, <sighs> and it's a big open world game. Oh my god, Days Gone, yeah. okay, and that's on the PlayStation, it's PlayStation 4. And I think not plugging PlayStation at the moment, but I think it's on sale. Where's my controller? <laughs> oh yeah, I, I, I and <laughs> this play game. It while me, I'm talking to you. I played that game until I platinumed it. Like there was no putting it wow. down, and it does that wow. doesn't happen for me with all games. I just it's so good. I've played a lot of I've played a lot of open open world stuff, but I haven't ever actually like stuck with it because I keep getting distracted by things. Because it can become tedious at times, can't it? It can be, especially if you yeah. get lost in the middle of the world and you can't figure out how to get back. Like, like I did um, with Paddy, Fallout. <laughs> Paddy has said to me that I should, like, obviously, like, see, like, you've been keeping, obviously, you've seen Paddy's channel. Paddy has interviewed mm-hmm. a, a ton of the, the people and the voice actors for yeah. Red Dead Redemption 2. And I oh, still, so cool. and I still can't, I actually can't play that game. I play I've, for an hour and my brain melts. I'm just going, it's too slow. It's, I, I can't get where yeah. I need to go and I just have to put it down. It's not the game. The game is fantastic. It's gorgeous. It's my brain just does not seem to it's, want to it's cooperate. It's the lack of tips as well when you do find yourself a little bit lost. So I did a I did an unboxing video recently about it and it, it took, I think I recorded about three hours worth of it yeah. until I just finally just went, you know what, I'm just going to end it here. And it was actually like, one of the endings to a video that I was really disappointed with because I was like, and that's it for today. And I'm not going to play any more of that because I'm really fucking frustrated with it, you know? And I had to cut out like a massive piece out of the middle, like an hour's worth of me just riding my horse, trying to figure out what to do next. And it just turned out that there was this like instruction down at the bottom of this, this, of the screen to, to do something in the inventory in order to then move on to the next part of the, of the, of the game and I was just like why can't it just be a little bit more obvious like I'm trying my hardest (laughs) here to play this straight off the bat and it's like I can imagine how many people who have opened this game and gone well that's a bore I mean because they can't work it out it's so like I mean and it's when I put it on first I was looking at the landscape of it and how it looked yeah the water has this different physics to the grass. It's crazy. And like the horse leaves little footprints in the mud. Uh, I mean, it's it's, it's a like, masterpiece of how it, like, it's with how beautiful. it's created. But I think I yeah. just it, it's I just it needs more I, tips. I, like I will go back. I will go back eventually, and I will get stuck. And I'll find a window that I will just stick. Mm-hmm. Might not stick to the hundred percent of the actual entire game, but the story yeah. of it. Because yeah. I'm, I'm a big story gamer. I love story based games. That's why I kind of suggested like you know like Man of Medan and, and Little Hope and things like that to you. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely um, Definitely on the PlayStation 4, anyway, definitely get Days Gone. That is one I, I'm going to, as soon as we're done here, down. I'm going to look for it because then I'm going to do an unboxing video for it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I do, I do. I think that is, because for me personally, it's one of those games, and, and I'm like you, I find 
if there's too much or if it becomes too tedious, I do tend to yeah. find myself falling away from it after a while. And that game, for some reason, just... And I don't know if it was the story or the soundtrack or the fact that the hordes are so huge in this game. Yeah. Just, it, or, or, it, it's just crazy. Um, I think I think one of the games that really did it for me, like uh, like it succeeded for me, that was like um, you could create your own character and stuff, and there was massive like the universe was incredibly like huge. There's planets and and, and it was Mass Effect. Um, I I've been playing Mass Effect since uh, the the Xbox like Mass Effect One, and um, I think it's it's got a great balance of like planet an open world and um kind of if you wanted to just go straight through it and do the campaign like the main storyline then you can go straight through it and do that pretty quick um but then if you wanted to go back and do all the side quests and things it's it's got enough kind of help mid game yeah. or you know to for you to be able to then follow what's going on um Whereas, like I say, with, with Red Dead Redemption, I was just wandering around for ages going, I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to be doing. I mean, and, and it is, it's one of those things, It's I find it, it either lends, like with, with Grand Theft Auto Five. I I played that on, I, I bought it on the PlayStation 3, I rebought it yeah. on the PlayStation 4, and I think, I just I just played it dead, like I um, played I, I, everything I could possibly do in that game. Which is one of those. I think it, it has to. A certain game has to pull you in. But I think that's. Mm-hmm. I think that yeah. game kind of spoke to my inner love of gangster stuff. You know, <laughs> I do yeah, love see, gangster material in a lot of ways. So, <laughs> I, I I absolutely love. I quite I quite like the gangstery stuff, especially when you can play female. Yes, that's a massive thing for me. Not because you know playing a guy is sad. It's not. But I'd like to be able to relate to the character. Right. So. Yes. I started playing Cyberpunk. And um, never <laughs> Cyberpunk, and let's just say, yes, it is unplayable to a certain extent. I've, right? I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the glitches, the, the textures. I've seen I've seen screenshots of um, gameplay from a PC, right? Compared to the PlayStation, the PlayStation is probably 20 years behind on like the textures and the rendering and everything compared yeah. it's absolutely beautiful on the pc but i, I won't be, I'm, I'm not a pc player Mm-mm. nope i used you know to what? build pcs i used to build pcs and i'm I have not a game doing that <laughs> i genuinely do have a game in pc there yeah. and i i i built it for editing and entertainment and gaming mm-hmm. and i just can't i'm just a console guy you know, I'm mm-hmm. just attached to the console, you know. Um, yeah, me too. Kind of, I think that's the way. Everybody, I'm everybody keeps saying that if I if I loaded up Call of Duty on my because I have a gaming laptop, right? I have a Windows yeah. laptop, and the only reason I bought it was because of the Reillusion software would not run on my Mac. Right. And Re- Reillusion is like Unreal Unreal uh, Engine and stuff, yes. uh, like character creators and stuff. Um, and that's the only reason I bought it, and. <laughs> Now it's sitting in my workshop, uh, running the laser engraving software. So you can <laughs> actually use it. So you can actually three D print. Um, I used to be able to three D print, but I couldn't get my head around doing like the new. I've uh, not enough time. Yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't hyper focus myself on it because it just wasn't working properly, and I didn't have the background in Blender. Yeah. Like so, my brother has a background in Blender because he did a uh, video games um, course, and um, I just got to the point where I just needed it to work right there, right now. And if it wasn't going to work, then I was going to go off and do something else. So I did go off and do something else, and that was um, gaming instead of. But um, yeah, like I've just. I've just got what is that PC game, uh, the ghost hunting one, the Phantasma something or other, Phantasmagora or something. I am preparing myself to play on a keyboard and mouse for that, and I'm just like, I can't. My my friend Phil, um, Philip O'Connor, he is one of my oldest mates. We've known each other since we were kids, and mm. um, he's the guy that actually built my gaming PC. He yeah. has been trying to get around me to play on it on, on, on like with a keyboard and a mouse and then and like he even found a way to like design it so like you could use a controller and I yeah. still I still can't I just I, I don't just, know what it is it's like a mental block it's like a mental block in my brain 
go. I'm looking at the time, the time stamp here. Um, I had two more questions for you, but what I think we're going to do is, right, do you want to make this interview a trilogy? Yeah, sure. And we'll go for a part three um, okay. next time. We'll finish yeah. it up here and then we'll go on, we'll come back and we'll rock out the last few questions. And I'll Sounds ask great. But I haven't asked you. And then we will make this a trilogy. Why mm-hmm. the hell not? Yeah. I'm down with that. <laughs> right, so since Luna is down with that, we're going to end the show right here and we're going to pick this up on part three. Um, you are watching the Twisted Tubs podcast. I am Stephen Tubbley, a.k.a. Twisted Tubs. She is Luna, a.k.a. Wolfie. And we will come back to complete this trilogy very, very soon. Thumbs up in the air and see you in the next care too.